The Threat of Cornell West. It's written by David Corn. That's why you see him on the graphic. So if you didn't recognize who that is, you're like, who's that? Who's that guy? On the graphic, but the far left, that is David Korn. He used to appear a lot more on MSNBC in the last cycle. Haven't been really seeing him as often um, on MSNBC. I don't know if he said anything or they just got a new crop of people because they have to do that every now and then. They need new faces to propagandize you because eventually you find out that this is some bullshit. I used to listen to Rachel Maddow and Chris Matthews. Then I found out that's some bullshit. You see what I mean? You see why they got to always be changing, uh, changing people, but... Let's let's dive into a couple of quotes first that I I peeled from from this article. Where am I? Right here. And let's do this first one here. And it starts here. This is directly from this article. We'll bring up the full thing, but it says, quote, West, with the help of Dow, appears hell bent on waging a campaign that denounces Democrats and Republicans while progressive Democrats make the pitch that the left and the center must join forces to prevent Trump from retaking the White House and imposing the dangerous authoritarian schemes he and his allies have already cooked up. And we can just stop here uh, and discuss this part because this is not a selling point anymore. And Ajamu, I wish I had the tweet, but Ajamu said in the tweet, and I'm just paraphrasing here, Black folks ain't afraid of a second Trump term. That's what that's some that's some white culture shit that black folks ain't afraid of a second Trump term, especially not black working class. We're not afraid of a second Trump term. So simply telling us Trump is bad and Trump is going to end democracy. If that's your selling point, you can kick rocks and move a move about and let me go about my day. If you're not coming with something tangible. Stop coming to the black community tell, demanding something if you're not coming with something tangible. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, I've never seen so many people that's openly, that's black and openly saying that they're voting for Trump. Like, they're not MAGAs. They're like, I'm, I'm right. definitely voting for Trump. I'm definitely voting for Trump next. And you have to remember the bill that uh, that Trump has signed to let a, a whole bunch of people that Joe Biden had locked away during the 80s First step and, during, and, and the 90s. We are seeing those people out, outside now. You know what I'm saying? They are talking about their experience and you know what I'm saying? They they learn, you know what I'm saying? They 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 know the laws and shit like that. So they come in and they coming out of these jails anti-democrat as possible. Yeah. As possible. And they are teaching their sons, their nieces, their nephews this. They teach when I'm out on the streets, we talk about it all the fucking they man, I did 20 years for three crack rocks that I was gonna smoke. <laughs> type shit you know but yeah that's what happens spot on and um let's let's read a little more where is it right here uh right trump retaking the white house okay west this is where i left off west certainly can't win but he does raise the specter of jill stein and ralph nader as a candidate with the potential to screw things up big time for the Democratic candidate. Like, that's not a thing. Like, th this is this is the stuff that gets to me is like these wording, this wording of shit is like, that's not a thing. Like, y'all was like never going to get those votes. Yeah, that's not about? a thing. You keep saying mess things up, screw things up big time as if things going good for the Democrat party was the plan that everybody had when I was never a poor on, on this plan, David Corn. but let me continue with hold the, on, rest on, of the, quote. the only the only people that's messing up uh, the democratic party strategy is the Democrats. 70% right. of it, of the party doesn't want Biden to run. They think he's too old. They think he's out of his fucking mind with dementia and whatever the fuck it may be. He has problems. The party don't want him. It's not Cornell West's fault. This is your problem. <laughs> and you you guys are not old votes. You don't own votes. You're never going to get those votes. Like, y'all y'all making me so pissed off. I might fuck around and vote for the first time in my motherfucking <laughs> life and just vote for Cornell West just to spite you motherfuckers, right? Just yeah. to spite you because you was never going to get those votes. You was never going to get those votes. And I'll, like even, the, even with the people that's mad at RBN, 
for uh being tough on uh Cornell West. So fucking what? Somebody gotta be tough. We gotta keep him on his P's and his P's and Q's. And like I don't really have a big deal with Peter and whatever the fuck it may be. Mm-hmm. Look, party's gonna have all types of fucked up people in there, whatever the fuck it may be. Vote for who you're voting for. You know what I'm saying? If these if he if he got the strike, if he got the uh your priorities in line, then you know what I'm saying, y'all want the same things, then vote for Cornel West. Fuck all this bullshit. Oh, you might get Trump. You might get this. No, what you're gonna get is the same shit over and over and over. The best thing that we can do right now is throw a monkey wrench in, the, in their fucking game and say, hey, we got our fucking 11%. We got our 20%. You can't ignore us anymore. We in this bitch. Let's change this shit. Now we have negotiation power. You know what I'm saying? And we can we can help more people uh, reach seats in, in greens or independent, whatever it may be, so we can have more negotiation power when the Democrats and Republicans are sitting there playing that motherfucking uh, 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 playing back and forth with each other. We're like, no, we hold the bill from, from both of you motherfuckers. How about that? How about none of you motherfuckers get a signature until this is done? And this is the power that we, we need to be focusing on if you are a voter. Spot on. Uh, it continues and says Stein and Nader demonstrated that a fringe candidate can make a big difference in a close election. That's a history lesson that Professor West has chosen to ignore. You, you maybe he didn't ignore. It. He saw it. And he was like, I don't give a fuck about it. Like it's so it's so annoying. I guess that's the best way how these professional managerial class left just assume that everybody's uh, top goal is to make sure Donald Trump doesn't go back into the White House, and that's not. I'm telling you that shit right now. That's not at all, at all a priority for me whatsoever. Um, Oh, here's the rest of it. And here's another. This is a quote, actually. This is not me talking. Somebody thought this was me talking. This is also from the article, and this is the second part. Meanwhile, West who has been the honorary uh, chairman of the Democratic uh, Democratic Socialists of America is not scaling back on his association with the left. They're mad about, and I'm going to pause here. They're mad. I know everybody know about the upcoming event on October 3rd. Um, uh, Cornell West will be speaking. Sabby is going to be covering it. Maybe I'll bring it up in in a second. But they bring it up right here in this article. And this is what he says. Listen to what he says about this. He, that's Cornell West, has signed up as a headliner for the October 3rd event. It's an anti-war event, by the way, for those that, and I'll bring it up for, for those that might want to attend. Uh, event, um, October 3rd event uh, featuring speakers and groups that oppose U.S. military assistance to Ukraine. They tend to claim that the barbarous war that Vladimir Putin launched is a proxy war for NATO and that the United States is responsible for the lack of peace resolution. You notice how they put that shit in parentheses. Uh, my nigga, that, that, that is the truth. It, it, it is a proxy war. It is a proxy war. And you know what? You know, I'm, t- I'm, I'm honestly tired of people calling it an invasion. If anything, the U.S. invaded Ukraine. If anything, the U.S. invaded Russia borders. Like, if you want to point some fingers, we can point some fingers. Putin is not the nicest guy, you know what I'm saying? But he don't have Obama blood on his hands, right? <laughs> he ain't got Bill Clinton type of blood on his hands. George, so, George Bush so type if, of if blood. So if you want to point some fingers, why are we here? How did we get here? How did they? How did these people get this, uh, the training? How did they get these mil- uh, uh, these these shelves? And this military equipment. Why are we so, you know, saying into this war? Because we have something to lose, and we have something to gain from it. America, you know, like it is a proxy war. America is responsible, and I'm tired of people acting like, you know, uh, we are the good guys here. No, this is the empire. This is the empire. Understand what your empire is doing around the world, or if not, shut the fuck up. Because if you're not going to learn history the, uh, and, and full of detail, then bitch don't even try to learn at all. You're just wasting our, you're just wasting everybody's time. We have truths. And you, you honestly doing yourself a disfavor. 
Yeah. Uh, let me continue here. The list includes. This is the list of people. They're mad. They're so what? So he, what he's doing here? He's trying to say, look, he's so fringe. Look, he's out here doing this crazy event. People against Ukraine, and look how they even view the war. And that's what he's trying to do here. Now it doesn't resonate with us. It resonates with people who would uh, listen to him. And then he goes and goes on to do this. The list includes Claudia de la Cruz, and that's right now. That's currently the person that. I would vote for would be Claudia de la Cruz. And you notice they mention, they don't mention she's running for president. He doesn't even mention Claudia de la Cruz is the presidential candidate for PSL, uh, the party for socialism and liberation. She's that presidential candidate, but they go, the list includes Claudia de la Cruz, co-executive director of the people's forum, which identifies itself as Marxist. You understand how much of a bad word this is to capitalists. That is the most foulest word besides communism is Marxism. And you hear them talk about it all the time. They use it as a slur um, all the time um, on corporate uh, media because I hear it all the time. And then they point out Eugene uh, Purier, I think that's how you say his name, is also going to be there. A former host of Radio Sputnik, a Kremlin controlled <laughs> propaganda <laughs> outlet. And this nigga, Benjamin. I, hey, <laughs> CJ. Uh, you know what he, you know what he was doing when he was typing this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you see on TV, <laughs> like God, the, the nails just be up there like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's such cartoonish how Man. he's describing this. Yeah, but then he says, and Medea, Medea Benjamin, the leader of Cold Pink, the subject of a recent. New York Times investigation that showed that this anti-war group has received significant financial support from a pro-China tech mogul. Just having China in there is the is the propaganda piece there. It has become a defender of China's atrocious human rights record as if the United States... Who beats the United States human rights record? <laughs> it's so fucking... It's laughable... What these people say, but anyway, that's Ooh. the article. I'm gonna bring it up. Uh, I'm gonna bring up the full article in just a second. But this is the nonsense that a person like David Corn. I don't know what the. What do you think they think they can do? See, the thing about Marianne Williamson and RFK. This is why I'm so happy he didn't run as a Democrat. They don't need to write articles. The threat of yeah. Marianne Williamson. They don't need to do that because they can just crush them in a primary. Yeah. That's all they got to do. They can't do that with Cornell West. This is why they fear him. What do you think he's in store for if he goes all the way to November? What do you think he's in store for? Uh, uh, if he was, if he's successful, death. But um, he's in, he's in store for a lot of uh, of course, a lot of smears and people going in his background and going through his trash. You know, probably planting yeah. some shit on him or whatever the fuck it may be. Because the people do one thing that. The Democrats and Republicans don't want is the non-voters with the voice. It's the people with the uh, the, in, the independent block, the biggest block. They don't want us with a party because they can go ahead and play their back. They they uh they they game a tug of war all day without us, but we just snatch the rope from them. They like oh shit no they don't want this. So one thing Cornell West is good for. Is waking up the non-voters. Uh, is waking up yeah. the, uh, the 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 post duopoly post Democratic Party uh, 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 voter and whatnot. So I think he's gonna. I think he's on the right track to get a lot of vote. I think. I think they are undermining him, especially in these polls. Well, mm -hmm. not because when the last time you've been polled. If that was the case, Gordon, I come say on. that all the time. I never get polled, and I'm so into politics. How how people? I'm into politics. I've never been polled ever. You would think they'd be emailing us every day, like, what, what do you think about this person, or whatever it may be, seeing all the shit that we sign up with and, and too. But yeah, I think they're undermining him, and the bigger his message you get, the more people are going to feel like voting. I think it's going to uh, uh, bring people back to hopefully not, but some kind of like the Obama days where we actually have a voice. We actually have a, a, a choice. We, you know what I'm saying? This is our platform. We built this from the bottom. And this is what I was uh, uh, explaining why 
building a third party is better than joining a winning third party. Mm. Like I would rather I would rather join a losing third party than join a winning third party because they don't need me if they're already winning. They already have the strategies and whatever. But now this is our chance to take over this party. Now this is our chance to you know mold this in our and whatever the fuck. We, whatever fuck we want it to be, you know what I'm saying? We can call it a leftist party, a Marxist party. We can turn Green Party into a socialist party, but this is our chance to build it from the ground up. And uh, I think people should take advantage of this time with Dr. Cornell West, especially him not being so far left. You know, he not he not the, the furthest left candidate running for president right now, you know? Uh, right. Uh, That's this, Claudia. This, I don't even yeah. know if it's Claudia, but she's further yeah. left than him, yeah. Yeah, so and he's not they, further left than us either. Like Cornell, yeah. let's be real. I mean, we've said this even before his candidacy. This is not a shock. We've said this before. I think you were one of them. Like yeah. he is to our right. Like Cornell West yeah. is to our right, and Definitely. that's that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. But but it, it, this, um, is, this is our time to get around him to push him to the left. Push him to the left. He needs right. more people around him. He has been surrounded by PNCs. His his entire right, career, right? Even even his right. job is being surrounded by their children. You know what I'm saying? This is our time to get in his ear to tell him, like, no, this won't work. You know what I'm saying? You're going to uh, turn people off like me and him and Jim at the at the bar and at the uh, at the plant, whatever it may be. Stick to the word of the of the uh, of the proletarian. Stick to the word of the worker and you would do fine, man. You would do fine. This is one of the things. This is one of the reasons why Trump was so successful in the Midwest. Because he spoke to the workers, he spoke for the workers. He came out to the plants, the, the plants that got shut down. He said, "We're gonna open this bitch back up. We're gonna get you guys your wages. We're gonna fight the NAFTA deal." You know what I'm saying? And he won the Midwest. I think he even won Detroit. Yeah, so, that's crazy. Won Detroit. Yeah, that's a crazy. black ass city. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, this this uh, this um relates to the topic, so I'll read Janice's tweet. Shout out to Janice, always showing us love. Spoiler is fake. Per exit polls in 2000, only 35% might have voted Dem. 25% might vote Repub. 40% would have voted other third party candidate. That didn't want to tell you that. 12% of Bush vote came from registered Dems. Cross party voters equal loss. They it's more people who are Dems that voted for Bush in Florida, for example, that year. It's more it was more Dems. They don't never talk about that. They don't talk about the Dems. They don't talk about the white suburban moms that cross over from Democrats and vote Re Republican. It's always it's always on us. So thank you, Janice, for that uh, super chat. But let me continue with another piece of another part uh, of the article. And I'll start here. I'm, not, I'm just going to read sections. Of, I'm not reading it from beginning to end. I've broken several stories on no labels. Let me let me make this bigger. There we go. I've broken several stories on no labels and revealed some of its funders. But I'm wondering whether the Democrats and their anti-Trump GOP allies should fret more about another potential threat. And that is Cornell West. And it goes on to say, Wes, the fiery left-wing <coughs> academic and orator, is running for president at the Green Party as a Green Party candidate. There are a bunch of little-known Green Party contenders, but he seems a good bet to snag the nomination. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll win. Yeah. That will give him act ballot access in many states. As of now, the Green Party is on the ballot in 17 states including Wisconsin, this is your state, mm -hmm. um, Michigan, and North Carolina. They're afraid of Michigan. These, these are the states that the Democrats are going to be kind of afraid of. Same ones always. Arizona, Georgia, Florida, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. North Carolina to a lesser extent. But these are the places, and he's on these. Guess what? These are two of the states that they thought Hillary was going to win. She lost. He's on in those states. And I believe he's on in, in Florida, too. Then it goes on and says, which are likely to be competitive in 2024. It's aiming to get on many more. In the 2020 race, the Green Party won a spot on the ballot in 30 states and write-in status in nine states. That's 39. 
So then that's around Rome. That's around where mm-hmm. they're expecting in 2024 to get around 40 because 17 is easy to get on about 20 states. It's the easiest to get on. That's why they are already on. Then there's another 10 to 12 states that it takes a little more effort, but they're surely going to get on. So there will be on 30 for sure. And then it'll be roughly eight, seven to 10 more. That'll be right in states. But in 2016, they got on 44 state ballots, man. If we were able to get, oh wait, 44 and could gather right in votes in three. So 47 states, you could have voted for Jill Stein. If they're mm-hmm. able to get up in their area with Cornell West, he could really do something. And even well, if we say I, Cornell I, West and Claudia combined, go ahead, Ron. Give I, her a comment. I've been uh, I would like to say something about the uh, when he said, I think, you know, saying maybe they should stop fighting each other and focus on Cornell West. If they do that, they know this. They're going to be helping Cornell West. We have so many people that's anti-Democratic Party, so many people that's anti-Republican yes. Party, and have no idea that Dr. Cornell West is running a Green Party. Like, I'll be talking to a lot of uh, older Black people out here, but like, hey, you know, Dr. Cornell West, hey, uh, you know, he came, I'll be talking to him about RBN, like, hey, he come, he came on the show, he running for president. Like, Doc, Dr. Cornell West? Like, yeah. Dr. Cornell West. Like, yeah. The, the civil rights fighter. Like, yeah. He running for president. Like, niggas don't even know. <laughs> they don't even know. So I think if they was to put a bigger spotlight on him, they're going to be doing him a service doing themselves a disservice. They know this because too many people hate them and is looking for an exit, looking for an exit. And they are, you know, uh, uh, not uh, calculating or they, they are miscalculating how many socialists are actually living in America. There are more socialists in America than it was in the 80s and 70s right now. You know, uh, they just don't have a party right now. So you you, you give them that plat- give them that platform if, you, uh, platform if you want to, you're going to be a fool. You're gonna be a fool, and he probably end up really throwing a, monkey, a real monkey wrench, in uh in the duopoly. For sure. Uh, right here, let's pick up here. One expert on black voting patterns tell me that West, a self-described non-Marxist socialist, this is you don't understand how they have that Marxist that puts fear, fear into them. So it's cl- they have to clearly make it to their audience, their capitalist audience readers that listen. He's socialist, but he ain't crazy socialist. He ain't Marxist socialist. That's what he's trying to make a point here. And a public intellectual who attained celebrity status when he was on the Matrix, and I never even knew that. I knew him. He didn't. I didn't know he was on the Matrix. I don't recall it. I'm sure he was. I don't recall that. I didn't. Oh, we saying Dr. Cornell West or somebody else? No, no. Cornell West was on the Matrix. He was. He's he's on a very short scene. It's not a lot of words. It's like very short. So I think Neo goes and asks a question and all he does is like a two couple of lines and then he then that's it. Like he doesn't say much. Somebody in the, in the audience may tell you what it is. Um, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, right here. Uh, no longer has much juice within the black community and is widely regarded as a egomaniac has been. What? Oh, hold on. Who, who wrote this? Wait. <laughs> this, 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 Wait, the same so this is David Corn, but he's saying he's David Corn is saying he's getting this part from one expert on black voting patterns. This is what this so called black expert that he never identifies. So, and understand, he doesn't say that the expert is black, he says this just is an expert on black voting patterns. But this, there's he's saying that David is saying that this expert. Is telling us that uh, West no longer has much juice within the black community and is widely regarded as an egomaniac has been. I don't know any black people who think that. I don't know any white people who think that. This is the first time I'm hearing this, but that's the critique they give of him. And it says, it's hard to know if that's an accurate appraisal. West is charismatic figure with a high profile derived in part from his anti-racism campaign and his hip-hop politics and assorted controversies, including clashes with Harvard, which he left in 2021. Um, but it goes on. I'm not going to read um, the rest of it. I'm going to... This motherfucker um, is disgusting. Yeah, he goes on and says, 
a bunch of stuff, but let me read this part. This is one part I do want to read. Not surprisingly, the West team is trying to shoot down all the talk of him being a helpmate to Trump. In the New York Times on Sunday, his campaign manager, Peter Dow, contended that the Democratic claims that West is a spoiler were anti-Democratic. Quote, you don't protect democracy by trying to kick Greens off the ballot, and you don't protect democracy by telling people you're a spoiler. You can't kill democracy to save I, I, it. I agree with Peter. I agree with Peter. Yeah. Um, and then he goes in a little bit on Peter. He says, P uh, uh, Peter is an interesting case, a Lebanese-American jazz musician who became a liberal brawler in the mid-2000s. He did digital work for the presidential campaign of, Jer of John Kerry and Hillary Clinton in 2016. He ran, and it just gave him a little, a little history. I don't, I don't need to, to, to go on here. Peter, hold um, yeah, I don't need to go on there because a lot of the <laughs> other points here, hold on a second. A lot of the other points I've already read in the beginning. Yeah. A lot of the other points I already read in the beginning, but there, how, there like, this is, I, I just don't ahead. get how, how can they consider him a spoiler when nobody like, dude, Nobody who's gonna be voting or think about voting Democrat, they ship they ship is already sailed. They have their mindset. They're voting for Joe Biden. They don't get <laughs> Dr. Corona West is not gonna come. It's not gonna uh, just change your mind. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna vote fucking third party. No, you might get a handful of people, but the base, no, no, not even Republicans. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't see him being a spoiler to anything. I see him being a spoiler to the duopoly and getting a a, a great outreach to the non-voters and the uh, and the independent voters, and getting them on his team. I see how that can be a spoiler, but as far as helping Trump, no, because Trump is going to win. Trump is going to win, whether uh, Cornell West is running or not. Was well, looking like Trump is. It looked like Trump is going to win. I believe the same thing. I, I do believe Trump, if he's if he's allowed to run, I do believe, and he's in it. I do believe Trump is going to win. I don't think it's going to yeah. be close either. I don't think it's yeah, going to be yeah, close. Yeah, I think course. he's going to win if it's Joe Biden, especially if he's still the one running. To me, but this see, is people, not even people, be close. people need to stop listening to people like Kyle Kalinske and Crystal Ball when they talk about we need to win, win, and win, and win. No, nigga, sometimes you need to lose. Sometimes mm. you need to lose to learn how to win. Sometimes you need to lose to learn how to strategize and fight again. Sometimes you just need to get up. And we ain't even up yet. So, you know, it's best for us to keep pushing for this Green Party, keep pushing for you no know, any third, fourth, fifth party in America that you can. So we can have more negotiation power amongst workers and not the corporations who's, who clearly own the Democratic and, and, and Republican Party. 